What is the difference between isometric and isotonic muscle contractions? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching. And in this video, we're gonna explore all about muscle contractions so that you understand what an isotonic and isometric muscle contractions are. And that will also include concentric and eccentric contractions. So as we dive into this in more detail, just know that there are three mock questions that you can go and test your knowledge with. If you're on our blog, just scroll down and you'll see those below. If you're not on our blog yet, click the link and you will go straight there to to be able to access these. So let's get started on understanding what a muscle contraction is. Now, if you learn about the sliding filament theory as part of your level two and level three anatomy and physiology knowledge, you need to understand that when a contraction takes place, the little tiny myofilaments, which are your actin and your myosin, move over each other to basically create tension in the muscle. And there's different ways that this contraction happens. It's, it's switched on, the muscle is on. It's not often relaxed, it's on and contracted. And that's the main thing you need to know about from a simplistic point of view. Now, when we look at the different types of contractions, the primary thing that's different is that they are all contracted, that's the same, but the primary thing that's different is about the lengthening, shortening, and the overall length of the muscle during that contraction. So let's start off with an isometric contraction. An isometric, when you break it down, iso means the same, metric means length. So it literally means same length. Now, if I have the actin and myosin still moving across each other, the muscle is still activated, it's, it's turned on. At that point, I'm not, if I'm not changing the length, if the origin doesn't get any closer or further away than the insertion, then I'm doing an isometric contraction. Now, for example, that'd be something like a plank whereby I'm holding, I'm contracting that muscle, but at the same time, there's no movement at a joint. The origin and insertion stay the same distance away from each other the entire time. That could be like a squat hold when you do it against a wall, like a, um, a wall sit. So as you're doing that exercise, you're working your quad muscle, but there's no action at the joint. It could be when you're holding a bicep curl in one position and you're literally holding that position, no movement, that would be an isometric hold. Now, the other type of muscle contraction is isotonic, and this is divided into two, one's concentric and one's eccentric. Now, before we have a look at those individual ones of concentric and eccentric, let's have a look at what isotonic means. So iso, like we said earlier, means the same, so it's, it means it's the same, but tonic this time is tone, so it's the same tone in the muscle. So it's still contracted, but we're not talking about same length because these all move. So the isometric had the origin and insertion exactly the same length apart the whole time, whereas isotonic, there's going to be movement between the origin and insertion where they go towards each other and away from each other whilst the muscle is contracted. Now, concentric contraction is one of the isotonic types of muscle contractions. And a concentric contraction is whereby the muscle is contracted, it's turned on, it's switched on, but at this point, the insertion is getting closer to the origin, which means that it's shortening. So concentric contraction is a type of isotonic muscle contraction whereby the muscle is on and it's shortening. Now, this is really important to know because this is the main thing that happens to a prime mover in any exercise in the concentric phase. So if I do a bicep curl and I lift the dumbbells from the floor against gravity, I'm contracting my bicep and the muscle is getting shorter as I lift that dumbbell up towards the ceiling. So as I do that, the muscle is getting shorter. It's therefore a concentric contraction. Now, when I reverse the, the dumbbell back down, I don't go and use a different muscle. I'm still using the same muscle, but I eccentrically contract because the muscle is still switched on. It's still holding the weight of that dumbbell. And then I lengthen it. I lengthen out the muscle as I take the insertion back away from the origin again. And that's your eccentric contraction. So let's explore all three of these in detail alongside an example of that bicep curl so you can follow along and do this. And I want you to do this next time you're exercising. I want you to really think about it. 
So you've got the concentric contraction to start off with. So let's say that you're holding your dumbbells in front, you're doing a bicep curl and you do concentric contraction, you keep the elbow still and you literally bring the dumbbells up towards your shoulder. And as you do that, your bicep gets shorter. That's your concentric contraction. That's the bit you'll feel as the tension, right? Then if I was to hold it at any point in that and just hold it still, let's say for a couple of seconds, that's the isometric contraction. You can feel the bicep is the one that is contracted, but it's not moving, it's staying still. Now, once I get to the top, I can then lower that contraction down towards the floor. And as I lower the dumbbell down towards the floor, I've got an eccentric contraction of my bicep. Notice that all happens of that prime mover. I don't change to a different muscle to move it down. It's the prime mover. And it basically is just getting shorter staying the same length and then getting longer. And that's what we're talking about in terms of the different types of muscle contractions. Now to test your knowledge for this, if you wanna check out the three mock questions that are alongside this video, literally just scroll down and you'll see those there and that will help you test your knowledge on all things to do with muscle contractions. But if you are struggling with your level two or three anatomy and physiology knowledge, in particular around muscle contractions, then definitely check out our Revision Mastery Bootcamp because it will really help you understand exactly how to break down these complex topics and make sense of them in a simplified way. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.